crowd here welcoming the Leicester side onto the field. Led by their captain, Peter Wheeler. And Mosley takes the field, led out by international Martin Cooper. A team unchanged from the semi-final, with Malcolm Swain, the only survivor of the losing first ever club competition final when Mosley played and lost back in 1972. He's part of a talented back division today that includes both internationals, Martin Cooper at fly half and centre Barry Corliss. A workmanlike pack that's well drilled and probably Mosley's greatest strength. They look to have the edge in the second row with Aaron Field. Both line out experts. They've hiked two in the back row and expertise up front. And what a fascinating comparison we're going to have at half back. Mosley with Chris Gifford alongside Martin Cooper there. And there's his opponent today in Les Cusworth. Leicester, of course, as always in letters, also unchanged from their semi-final, which means they have five internationals on duty, three in the pack, two in the backs. Peter Wheeler has fellow England prop Robin Cowling alongside him and Gary Adey at number eight. Paul Dodge and Dusty Hare, the two internationals in the backs. And in addition, three under-23 caps in flankers Ian Smith, prop Steve Redfern and scrum half Steve Kenny. Kenny and Cusworth out to prove today that they're as good as any halfback pair in the country. And the referee is Alan Wellsby, who interestingly enough refereed the first ever match in the Rugby Football Union Club knockout competition back in 71. And it's Mosley making the first error of the game in their kickoff through Martin Cooper out on the full. Mosley in the numbers and in the black and red hoops. So a real contrast in strips, white shorts for Leicester, letters for Leicester. So the first scrummage, always an important event this. Steve Kenny with the feed. Clean heel, Cosworth. They can head back there. There's Richard Aikenhead, 30-year-old, leading point scorer two seasons ago for Mosley. So the line-out where Mosley hoped to dominate through Russell Field and Barrier. Short to the front from Peter Wheeler, though. Kenny slips it inside to his pack. Gary Adey there. Scrum is just outside the Mosley 22. Chris Gifford off to the Far East with England at the end of this season. And close rival Steve Kenny alongside him. Lester wheeling it, making a mess of the Mosley put in. And they're in possession. Work back to Kenny. Cosworth dodge off his left foot over the head of Aikenhead. Bouncing on the Mosley goal line, it's a difficult one for Aikenhead, and he's caught behind his own goal line, and is forced to give away the five feet of scrimmage. Great following up there from uh, Tim Barnwell and Terry Burwell for Leicester. Put Aikenhead under real pressure, and Leicester have the foot in. Kenny looks like the dummy scissors. Caught by Cooper, though. That's Barry Corliss leading the surge downfield by Mosley. Peter Wheeler. And really setting off at a ferocious pace this match. So, scrummage midfield on the Mosley 22. Kenny defeat. And not in straight. National referee Alan Wellsby of the Manchester and Lancashire societies gives the free kick to Mosley and it's their captain Martin Cooper. He's lifted it high, given it the length though and the direction. That's a good clearance.
And that's to cut their line out to two. So this is an interesting variation on tactic with Gary Adi at scrum half moving out to take it at the back. On from Ian Smith. Steve Johnson looks for Cosworth. Cooper's on him. Cooper gathers it. Chips past the defence. Racing back is Burwell. Terry Burwell there saving the day. Well, almost a breakaway score this for Mosley. You see the loose pass back there to Cusworth. Strong play by Martin Cooper. And this was a neat little chip, which almost put him clear. But Burwell had covered across from the centre to save the day. Long restart kick goes straight to Aikenhead. Alan Thomas showed it. Good run. Just lost possession in touch. Alan Thomas, born and bred in Slinethley, played originally for Aberavon before joining Mosley. Peter Wheeler looking for revenge and the disappointment of defeat last year at the hands of Gloucester in the final. Tail there is uh, Ian Smith for Leicester. service to Cusworth. Aikenhead back in his 22. Puts it away off the left boot well. Originally a Cheltenham club player before coming up to Mosley. Trying to use it long. Deflection down from Derek Nutt. Cooper bundled down then. Referee though was looking for advantage from the Leicester knock-on so Mosley will get the foot in at the scrummage and the free kick against Mosley for the crooked feed into the scrummage, which gives Dusty Hare surely a chance of dropping a goal from about 30 metres out. Takes the tap, sizes it up, strikes it beautifully. What a kick. So the man who has scored 61 points up till today in this year's Leicester Cup run out of a total of 124, that's almost half the points for his club, puts Leicester ahead after just seven minutes of this final. Cooper restarts. Angles it for the corner. It goes just a metre or two over the goal line. Cosworth touches it down. with the dropout. Barrier goes in to take it, set it up. Supported by Russell Field. Gifford in trouble there from the flanker Steve Johnson. about eight metres outside the Leicester 22. Kenny finds Cusworth. Cusworth almost leaving that one nonchalantly late as Cooper came through. Doesn't make touch. Aikenhead has it. Eludes Newton. Inside to Nick Jevons. That's Barry Corliss. Turns, speeds Barrier. Cooper, Swain. Goes for the break. The good tackle was by Paul Dodge. Cusworth retrieves it, on from Tip Terry Burwell. And both sides moving this ball. Mosley again. Aiken head chips through, Thomas chases. It's Kenny back covering.
so 10 meters out that line out four is russell field five is barrier with the headband for mosley but it's over the top of them all smith acts as scrum half to cosworth plenty of men outside but that time decided to play safe there's cosworth one of the B internationals on this side who were in Romania. Steve Redfern there at the front. And it's Russell Field winning it for Mosley. Wheeler was through on Gifford fast. through Gary Aidy, sleeves rolled up as ever to Ian Smith, the flanker. Smith with support from Johnson. Steve Johnson, can he reach his back through outside him? Well, I think they must have been called back for a pass forward then, which must have been very close, but referee Wellsby was right alongside. Gifford gets away from Kenny. Oh, nicely played. Ryan Newton he goes. The support a bit slow getting there. Laird is outside. That's him now. Laird hands off the tackle, goes for the corner. He looks to have the speed. Yes, he's done it. Look at the delight on his face for the young Scotsman with the English accent. It came from really Gifford, superb break at that scrum. Look at the way he beat Newton on the outside, having eluded Kenny. He looked for support, and there, racing up on the left wing, is Bob Laird, beats the tackle off of Steve Kenny with a lovely handoff. Cusworth chases in vain. What a lovely try in the 15th minute of this match by this man, Bob Laird. So, Mosley into the lead. Crowd still buzzing with excitement after that spectacular opening try of this match. Four points to three then, Mosley ahead. And Aikenhead, who's already kicked 23 points in this uh, cup run, puts it over from the touchline. Well, the rugby in these first 15 minutes has been tremendous spectacle for the excited crowd here and the try and conversion that we've just seen were absolutely superb so the great rivalries of these two midland clubs continues now and so far this game worthy of being called a cup final Just short of the Mosley 10 metre line. Referee looking for advantage for an up on, gives the scrummage to Leicester. Well, Leicester perhaps may be reminding themselves at this time that in the semi final they were losing to Wasps before they came back to win by a very handsome margin. But now they're racing back through Dusty Hare to cover the kick throw in his own 22. So that's out on the Leicester 22. Down from Barrier to Chris Gifford. Referee not happy with that throw in. Being straight enough. Steve Kenny there, England under 23 representative. Former Coventry player Chris Gifford of five years with this put in for his club mostly. Gifford, Cooper, Swain. Swain goes for the outside break. There's a possible overlap on now, and the other wing is going to score. The tackle in the corner is good. Just held short. Mosley tried to follow through as Thomas went over, but the referee deciding that that 
ball was eventually placed over the line after the move had been stopped and Barry Corliss gets the penalty against him but that was so close to another try by the right wing now here it comes again Cooper then with that nice scissors move and you see there the strength of Swain setting up the overlap for Alan Thomas he looked to get there but Barnwell just managed to hold his man up the ball goes loose there's the pickup by Corliss he stopped and you see how he twists and turns to get it over the line and in fact gives away the penalty so Leicester putting the ball from the penalty safely away to the 10 meter line tap down though by Russell Field Cooper Corliss Bob Laird Dusty has tackled support from Swain and Leicester looking in all sorts of trouble so this was that exciting move again there's Cooper the miss move in the centre and there you see the pullback coming up outside now that's where Aikenhead got the knock Laird waited for the bounce and set off towards the corner once again going for a second try the cover there was good but looping round was Malcolm Swain inside looking for John Beale and eventually Leicester managed to put it away so this Mosley pack beginning to dominate affairs up front and no more so than in this department the line out as we suggested earlier Russell Field barrier at the tail Nick Joyce trying to get it but it's back to Cooper hits it high for the drop goal It's all going right for Mosley now. Martin Cooper then, with that ball won from the line out, puts Mosley six points clear with 20 minutes played from the line out. It looked as though Joyce had won that one at the tail, but he didn't control it. And the ball is loose. It's Barriere acting as scrum half. Cooper sized it up in a flash and put it through the middle and high. John Beale at the tail there for Mosley. Eight is Derek Nutt. Plenty of height all round in that line out. And Mosley certainly getting the better of the possession from it. His ball run into touch by Kenny. It's Barrier number five, Russell Field number four. Snare again doing the good work. Cooper, Swain. That's Aikenhead outside his winger this time. And it looks to me as if Barry Corliss has pulled a hamstring, but in the meantime, Leicester break away through Ian Smith. Supported by Robin Cowling. And Corliss is way back. And that looks like hamstring trouble, all the signs of it. And sad in, it is too for Barry Corliss. Perhaps this might have been the occasion to climax a very successful career for Mosley and for England in recent years. And there goes Andy Watson-Jones as replacement for Barry Corliss. Quite a blustery day out there. Cool, good ground conditions as well. Again, Mosley getting good ball. That was Cooper with change of idea then that fooled Leicester for the moment. Gifford's high ball. Up comes Dusty Hare, supported by Barnwell, but through is Alan Thomas. Barnwell, though, has it. Strong former Coventry winger. Barnwell deciding, I think, that it was time he had to go himself. So this is this nice little show of the ball by Cooper, almost getting his way through the Leicester defence there. Good high ball from Chris Gifford. And this is where he follows up the ball that Barnwell and Dusty Hare contest. And Barnwell sets off across field. From the restart, Leicester on the attack again. But losing the ball in the mall. Floated across to Swain. Watson-Jones to Bob Laird. We've seen his speed already. 
tries to go outside Dusty Hare, almost did so, but gets into touch. Well, he's looked a real threat down this left flank, Bob Laird. Staffordshire County player, former representative for Hertfordshire at under-16 and under-19 levels. Derek Nutt alongside Gary Aidy. One from the tail of the line. Beale and Ian Smith right at the back. Barrier, lovely deflection down to Gifford, picked up well by Cooper. The referee deciding that wasn't straight. Snapped up by Gifford, but not in first time. Wari, stocky, scrum half, Chris Gifford. Kenny, his opposite number then. Dusty Hair makes room. But fluffs the kick, Aikenhead with room. Applies with the Gary Owen up to the 22. Hair underneath it. Kenny to Cusworth. And the errors creeping into this Leicester side more and more. Cooper, caught by Newton, but supported by Jevons. This tall young flanker, Gifford, hesitated a little, passes to Watson-Jones. He's caught by Cusworth and Ian Smith too. And Leicester now have a chance. Burwell, Burwell with support from Dodge outside. Out to Barnwell on the left. Back inside the dusty hair. Hair into the Mosley 22. And the Tigers looking for it now. But held up by the Mosley defence. And the referee, in fact, has called Ian Smith to one side for the use of a boot indicated there. I want no more of that, says referee Wellsby, and gives the penalty immediately to Mosley. Well, I wonder if we'll see it at the end of this exciting attack by Leicester. There's good support play by Dodge on the outside, looping round Burwell, showing it, trying to set up Barnwell for the run, flicks it inside to Dusty Hare. And this is where the loose boot must have come in the ball buried there with the players but Smith is somewhere also buried with it Cooper trying to fool the Leicester defence as Dusty Hare raced back after taking a knock and Newton trying to keep that ball in play puts a foot out played almost three minutes of injury time. Mosley, six points clear. After Hazelwick there, two in the line. Down though from Derek Nuts. Gifford not getting that one high enough as he wanted and slipped. Dusty Hare, who recently became a father for the second time, had his first son, Christopher William, and he's delighted about that, but I'm sure worried about the proceedings here and now, trailing, as Leicester do, by six points. Down from Hare again. What tremendous lineup ball he's giving to Gifford. Gifford from the high ball. Newton then. Well, the main thing was to get it out of play, which he did. It's Mick Newton, 22-year-old, with the final kick of this first half, which sees Mosley certainly with the lion's share of possession, perhaps slightly worried that they've not more points on the board than the nine points, which sees them six points clear at half-time. But so far, dominating proceedings up front with excellent line-out ball in particular from Barrier and Russell Field going well up front and Leicester clearly have immediate and obvious problems in the forward battle. So Leicester then prepare to start this second half through Dusty Hare. 
In fact, uh, switch move brings the kick from Paul Dodge. Side for the restart dropout. And again, this obvious problem in the lineout for Leicester being exposed with Mosley getting first touch of that ball and winning it back to Gifford, Cooper. Barnwell covering back, supported by Dusty Hare. Outside is 22, that came off a Mosley hand, so the Leicester players are onside, despite what the crowd may feel. Cooper, Gifford, Skifford, who was England's scrum half replacement against New Zealand this season, now getting his opportunity on the close season tour at the base of that line out for Mosley. There it is again. Astley ties it in from the tap down. Mosley keeping control of it, wheeling the whole scrummage round. Back it comes, Gifford has a go himself. Well, it doesn't come off, but it certainly makes the opposition flankers think twice next time that Gifford has the ball. Will he pass it? Will he have a go himself? So it has a positive effect. And even more besides, with a penalty to follow. With Wheeler, I think, guilty there of maybe handling that ball on the ground in the ruck. Certainly an offence indicated by him. Well, the last time that these two sides met in the John Player Cup, Aikenhead had a field day with a try, a penalty, and a conversion. He's already got the conversion today. This penalty would certainly give Mosley something to sit back on more comfortably. Aikenhead then. Struck it well. Looks good. It's over. Just what Mosley needed to give them a nice buffer. 12 points to three and three and a half minutes now played of this second half. Leicester have a long hill to climb now. Dodge again, trying to force the dropout. And actually went over the crossbar, so it wasn't a bad effort. Cooper touches down. Kenny. Cowling. Caught. Kenny again. Tries to set something up for Newton. Mosley covers there. And Lester committing the errors now, through offside, giving away another penalty, just inside the Mosley half, and Cooper will try and pin Leicester further back towards their end goal line. Instructions from the two half-backs there, Gifford and Cooper, just seven metres inside the Leicester half. Mosley to throw. Gary Cox, their hooker. Certainly seemed to have no trouble in the scrummage set piece either, but uh, taking a little while to get his target right for the throw in. And a penalty for coming across offside in the line out given against Mosley. Not the 10 metres. 
and Wheeler deciding to run this one when perhaps Dusty Hare might have had a go at goal. Kenny though, on to AD. And Leicester need a score now to bring them back in this match desperately. And the crowd, their 10,000 supporters here getting behind them, trying to lift their effort. Mosley number eight, Derek Nutz, receiving attention in a game which really has had total commitment and a lot of bruising encounters, but clean ones. Bit of shoulder trouble there. And of course, Derek Nutt has had shoulder trouble of late and indeed spent a week's recuperation in Spain to try and get over a previous injury and it doesn't look good at all from the way he's reacting. He had a lot of treatment from a what they call a magic black box that Mosley have. But he does look to be in real trouble now, but still playing on, packing down at number eight in this scrummage. Just outside the Mosley 22, and of course his presence crucial, but Leicester get the heel anyway. Cusworth, Dodds trying to float it through. Burwell chases. Back goes Cooper. Cooper losing it behind his own goal line. Aiken heads there to put it away. But I think we will see the retirement from the game of Derek Nutt. Clearly his fight to stay fit in the last 10 days or so has only paid off up till 10 minutes into this second half and you can see he's in real pain. Derek Nutt, part of a new Mosley back row this season that has done so well and this man a key part of the forward effort and receiving generous applause with that recurring damaged shoulder trouble seeing him retiring from the field. The restart, the drive by Leicester at the line out. They get it back from Cowling to Kenny. Cosworth to Burwell. Hare in the line. Hare almost clear. Supported by Johnson. Johnson four metres out. The Leicester players losing it at the last. It's Gifford that breaks away with it, but he's again in trouble. And Mosley defending their own line stoutly. Kenny goes for the corner, looks for the loose pass inside to find someone in support, but a Mosley player grabs it. And it's Russell Field, uh, rather John Beale that was back there. But the pressure on now, testing moments these for Mosley without their number eight. So they're packed cut to seven, this crucial scrummage now just four metres out. Kenny has it to Cusworth. Dodge to Burwell. Burwell tackled by Aikenhead. Dodge again. Trying to force his way through the Mosley defence. But a penalty given against Leicester. For I think attempting to play the ball after the tackle as Steve King comes on to replace Derek Nutts. Number 18 there. Steve King, former player a few years ago in the Wales squad. From the kick, Dusty Hare attempts the drop at goal. Will it straighten up? Just curling left. Dusty Hare going for a, a second drop goal. One successful already, but the scoreline stays the same. 12 points to three. Mosley have a nine-point lead. Cooper lifts it high, tries to give his pack time to get there. Derrier is pass, not gathered cleanly by Kenny. And certainly the Leicester halfbacks not enjoying the clean service they were getting in the semi-final. Cusworth now though, two dusty hair. Lifts it. Barnwell racing hard. Is well taken by Aikenhead. Trying to get one down from Gary Aidy that time. But 
Mosley seem to have all the aces in the pack when it comes to the liner. And that's obstruction by Mosley. Flying right over the ball, so a penalty to Leicester. And that certainly wasn't released there by uh, Russell Field. So I think Peter Wheeler has decided that trailing by nine points, they need three now to at least give them a chance to get the try and conversion to level it. Can Dusty Hare put this one over from about 30 metres? The answer's obvious. So that keeps Leicester in the hunt. The boot of Dusty Hare, which has been instrumental in keeping Leicester in the hunt in the whole of the last two seasons, cup runs, 12 points to six, and we're exactly midway through this second half. What a last 20 minutes it promises to be. Well, an interesting point academic at this moment is that should Leicester get the try at conversion, both sides will be deemed level still, the 12 all by the rules of this competition, which of course in the first instance judges it if the scores are level on tries and then goals from tries. And if that were to be the state of play at the end of this match, then there would be a period of extra time to be played. But that's all hypothetical because Mosley still are six points ahead. Scrummage 10 metres outside the Leicester 22. And Leicester seeming to last a bit better and getting cleaner service than they did in the first half from up front. And they run it out of defence. Burwell tries to flip it on. He has to check to come inside in his dodge. But there's Barwell in support. But there's more fire now about this Leicester effort. John Beale did the good covering tackle for Mosley. Mosley 10 metre line. Over the top for Kenny. Took it well. Supported inside by Johnson. Couldn't hang on to it. No knock on given. And Mosley break away through Astley initially. Back through the pack, two half-backs. Cooper's kick charged down by Cusworth. Driven on by Swain, but in touch. Malcolm Swain there, the only survivor of the final that Mosley contested in 1972. Down from Joyce, Kenny to Cusworth. Burwell. Dodge to Hare, well set up for Newton. Cooper across the cover. Newton chips into the 22. Gifford goes down on it. The tie goes over the top, but it's flipped back for Mosley to Malcolm Swain, but it's a penalty to Leicester. And what will they do now? They're trailing by six points. I think the ball was obscured or obstructed or maybe even passed off the ground by Chris Gifford. And Peter Wheeler's decided to give Dusty Hare the penalty attempt. Difficult decision, trailing by six points with just about 11 minutes to go. Needing a try to, and a conversion to get level with Mosley. But this could bring them within three points. And the ball rolls over to add to the tension. Dusty Hare, who has scored all Leicester's points with a drop goal to open the scoring in this match and a penalty in the second half. Dusty Hare, so gently, but just as effective as if it banged it over the top of the North Stand. Well, Leicester certainly have been coming back into this game in 
this last quarter, indeed in this last 20 minutes or so. And perhaps that's a fairer reflection of their effort in this second half. 12-9 then the score, and it's still all to play for with 10 minutes to go. And the massive contingent of Leicester fans who've come bombing down the motorway to Twickenham today, really giving full voice now to their support. Mosley rivaling them in the shouting match from the terraces. Free kick to Leicester. Nick Joyce. They can head within two lines. Puts it out on the Mosley 10 meter line. Well done, Mosley. Lift their forward effort again, which was so superb in the first half quite such the dominant force in this second period but they have it again from the line out Cooper now has a has a dash himself is caught on the halfway line the ball well unrelenting pace and excitement this game has and clearly it's going to last through to the bitter end bitter that is for the losers in this superbly contested match just about on the halfway line Cosworth the switch dodge Burwell linked it on well to Dusty Hare sees the cover and cuts inside it retrieving tackle by Swade again by Watson Jones on Leicester but it's back from uh, I think Azelrig Cosworth Burwell Burwell over the halfway line still going eludes field out to Newton Newton tackled by Lair to the 22 and it's Mosley under the storm of pressure now so it's on the Mosley 22 this scrummage listen to the roar Gifford in trouble that had been indicated by referee Wellsby that was false optimism just to put in at the scrummage but that's a bonus to Leicester on that far right hand touch line they're getting the push on in the scrummage Kenny to Cosworth to Dodge floats it through for Barnwell to chase and he has pace Barnwell what can he do with it now Hair inside couldn't hang on to it Thomas retrieves it this really is building up to a tremendous climax. And the ball's not coming out of that. Well, for those that were sensible enough to decide to come down and support this club final today, they will certainly have been rewarded by the display we've seen of commitment and excitement. Offside against Leicester. Just what Cooper wanted, the relieving kick. Let's play back nearer to halfway. to go 12-9 Mosley's slender lead and Leicester still looking in the hunt Gifford hoists the high one Barnwell comes in to gather it referee waits to see any Mosley advantage coming from the knock-on and there's one of those typical Mosley drives that are so impressive the players bounding together controlling the ball and they still have it eventually from Astley to Gifford Cooper 
Swain, tackled by Cosworth, gets it on to Cooper again, the tackle that time from Dodge. Now a chance for Leicester. Newton with Barnwell up outside, late on the pass, eventually gets it to Barnwell. Down he goes from Alan Thomas. The referee decides it wasn't late, dusty hair racing through, and the ball in touch. of these two sides who've been going at it hammer and tongs from the word go Leicester 10 metres out we're four minutes from full time 12-9 to Mosley Ian Smith at the tail of the line up for Leicester supported by his pack it's Hazelrig and Joyce coming round driving now the Mosley pack back towards their line Mosley that is who scored a push over try against the Mike of Gosford at Gosford and still Leicester edging there Mosley hold them up, what a contest of brute strength this is. And Mosley, I think, regrouping just in time beneath that power assault from Leicester, who now have the put in. Kenny with the put in, it is. Kenny goes, Kenny for the line, and Kenny over. And the crowd, the Leicester supporters go wild. They pulled it back from the dead. And amidst this mayhem. And Leicester can hardly believe their good fortune. Let's see it again. Kenny darting there between the Mosley defenders, initially Bob Laird, and the little scrum half burying underneath the vital try in the dying minutes of this game. So Leicester ahead, 13 points to 12. Only the second time they've been ahead in this match since the 15th minute of the first half. Bitter disappointment this must be for Mosley. The conversion now attempted by Dusty Hare. And that makes it an even more bitter pill to swallow. But we have about a minute and a half of proper time to go, plus injury time to be added on. 15 points to 12. What a game this has been. Cooper restarts. Now can the brave Mosley side who've really done so much and so well in this match, especially up front, pull it back. As Leicester have. Dusty hair, not really finding the space he wanted, finds Aikenhead instead. Drops it neatly in. Dusty Hare will attempt this kick at goal. Well, I say that, but of course, Hare has kicked them from further distances than this before. And in this match already, 11 of those 15 points coming from the boot of Dusty Hare to give him a personal record tally in Cup Rugby of 72 points for his club in this season. So from about three metres inside the Leicester half. This could seal it if it goes over. Dusty hair. Hooked it. And Cooper runs it. The referee blows for another penalty. 
for charging the kick, I think, was given there against Gary Cox. A lot of people think that's the final whistle, but believe me, it's not. We may be into injury time, and the Leicester players ushering their over-exuberant supporters off the field. And that decision, though, still is crucial because with the charge of the penalty, which I think was the reason for the decision, rather than not being 10 metres back, Dusty Hare has a second chance to seal this match for Leicester with one minute now played of injury time. 15 points to 12. Leicester ahead at last for them. Can Dusty Hare seal it now? Will it curl it up? Off the post, but not over. And Cooper runs it. A brave last attack, perhaps this. Swain inside the Jevons. He can't hold it. Gary Adey there to drive it, and Leicester going wild. They win it back to Cusworth, a tries the drop goal, one of his great specialities, of course. But Mosley have it now. Bob Laird has a go, is caught on the 22. The ball kicked on by Barnwell. Aikenhead bangs it downfield to put it out of danger and perhaps to create a Leicester error. Dusty Hare has a drop goal attempt. It's a massive attempt, but hooked. Steve King, the replacement flanker, decides it's his turn to try and pull something out of the fire. Inside to Astley. Back from Barry Air. What a game those second row players have had. On to Swain. The tackle by Dodds. The support by Watson Jones. Out to Bob Laird on the left. And these players, how they keep at it, I don't know. Non-stop running from side to side in the 84th minute of this match, which is the final minute, the final whistle goes. Leicester can't believe their luck, but what a final it's been, and what a credit to both teams, as the crowd, the young boys in the crowd, swarm onto the field. The Leicester supporters to salute their heroes, who pulled back a game that looked beyond recall. Well, jubilation there for Paul Dodge, for the Leicester Tigers indeed, in an outstanding season, but, well, what, what commiseration one must have for Martin Cooper there, the Mosley captain, who led up until the 77th minute of this match, whose pack had played so well, but I suppose who in the last resort must wonder why they weren't further ahead with the superb possession that they'd won throughout. Well, Dusty Hare being buffeted through the crowd, but he won't mind that on a day when he scored 11 of those 15 points that saw Leicester scrape home through. Even he can afford a smile in the depths of exhaustion which these players must feel. And now, the moment to complete it all for Peter Wheeler, for Leicester captain. Captain again of Leicester Tigers, who receives the John Player Cup from Stanley Couchman, the president of the Rugby Football Union. And he's waited a long time for that. Robin Carling and Gary Eady, how appropriate to see those three there together. Three great Leicester Tigers of many years and England internationals to boot. supporters in club rugby in Britain and they came here today in their thousands and their journey was re indeed rewarded Steve Johnson and a kiss on the cup from Paul Dodge from Les Cusworth 
from Arthur Hazelrig. And indeed from Steve Redfern and Ian Smith. Mick Newton, the last to go down with the most treasured possession.